Hello everybody. Now we're going to look at the strategic role of operations management. Strategic means affecting all business functions. The strategic role of an operations manager is to contribute to the direction and plan of the business. Now that plan might be a short-term plan or a long-term plan. The main goal of all businesses is to maximise profits. So therefore, the strategic role of an operations manager is to manage the costs so that the business can maximise the profits. Now costs in that operational function will depend on the, the product that's being produced. But generally speaking, the different costs are, firstly you've got your input costs. Now these are things like raw materials and your labour, your time, your land, your machinery. You then have specifically your labour costs. Now humans need to have wages, they need to have sick leave, they need to have long service leave. These are all costs for the business. We then have our processing costs. That's, it. That's actually making the product now. So when the machines are running, we are processing a, a product and that is costly. Our infantry costs means storing our products. Even our inputs need to be stored our unfinished products need to be stored, and our outputs need to be stored. Storage is a very big cost for a business. Quality management these days is crucial for the operations manager. If they don't have a quality product, the consumer's not gonna want their good or service. So therefore, products need to be checked continually along the way. That is time consuming, and therefore, it's costly for the business. Now, one of the strategic roles of businesses is to come up with plans or ideas to make their product better. One of the strategies used by a lot of operations manager is called cost leadership. Cost leadership is when you have the lowest cost and you're the most price competitive in the marketplace. However, you must also be profitable. So it's a very difficult dilemma. You're trying to cut costs, but also be profitable. Operations management managements therefore must find ways to reduce their cost in production. And so they must analyse every single step of their production and try and find ways that they can reduce the cost of that production. Now Bunnings is a fantastic example. We all know Bunnings from their marketing. They have saved a lot of money on their marketing. Their marketing is very, very simple and basic. They use their own employers in the advertisements. They're not using actors and they're able to cut costs. Bunnings also use very large premises. They have a lot of their goods in the store. Therefore, they save money on their land. Economies of scale is very, very important for global and large scale businesses. Now, economies of scale means that a business can cut costs by increasing the scale and size of the business. Now, how do they do this? Well, they buy in bulk. If you buy one ton of steel, and then you buy 15 tonnes of steel, it is much cheaper to buy the 15 tonnes of steel because it's cheaper per unit and you're able to negotiate the price with your supplier. Your supplier is going to want to sell you more, so they will reduce the cost for you. Now if we look at the example of Holden Australia here making their cars. Holden Australia have a very, very large plant. They produce en masse thousands and thousands of cars. The inputs come in in the tons of steel and the rubber. So they're using economies of scale to make their cars to negotiate lower costs with their suppliers. It's a very, very successful model for businesses and more and more global businesses are trying this strategy. The operations manager must also differentiate their good or service. Now, what does this mean? In goods, we need to analyse exactly what a good is. A good is tangible. A good can be seen and it can be touched. It tends to be standardised, not all the times. Sometimes goods are customised, but generally goods are the same. So if I produce a Nike runner, I will produce thousands of the exactly the same runner. It's very easy to produce that way and then sell to the consumer. Goods can be owned. If I buy a table, 
I own that table and then I can resell it. Goods take considerable time between production and consumption. If I buy a chair, it's not going to happen automatically. That chair needs to be made. Sometimes I may need to order that chair and it could take weeks for me to receive my purchase. However, goods are very easy in that it's very easy to determine the inputs and the cost of the good. If I calculate all my goods, my inputs, I then are able to add a margin to work out how much profit I can make from that product. Services are very different for the operations manager. They need a completely different strategy when they're working with a service. Services are intangible. We said a good is tangible, we can touch and feel it. A service is intangible. If I go to the hairdresser, I can't touch a haircut. It's not something that I can touch. It's generally customised. If I go to the hairdresser, the hairdresser will have to customise that haircut to suit me because everybody has different hair types. Everyone might, someone might want a short haircut, someone might want a long haircut, someone one might their hair dyed or permed. A haircut cannot be owned. We don't walk out of the hairdresser and own our haircut, we can't then resell our haircut. The production and consumption occurs at the same time. So if I go to the dentist, that's a service. I am there the entire time of that operations process. The value of a service depends on what the consumer is prepared to pay. Some people want their hair cut to cost $20. Other people are prepared to pay $250. Consumers are very different and so a business must adapt to what their consumer is prepared to pay. Now product differentiation. This picture here shows us what a business is trying to achieve. They want their product to stand out from the rest. This gives them a competitive advantage. And it will differ if I'm producing a good or a service. Very, very different for the operation manager when they're trying to differentiate a product. Now let's have a look at goods first. One way we can differentiate our product with a good is we can vary the actual product features. Now if we look at toothpaste, it's very easy for the operations manager to look at the, the size of the tube, the packaging, and that way they can stand out from their competitive and get a competitive advantage. They need to make their product more attractive to the consumer. Now in the recent iPhone that Apple have produced, they've gone for the element of colour. So they've used different colour to attract their audience. Another way that we can differentiate our good is through its quality. Now Qantas is an excellent example of this. Originally their product was Qantas. They did domestic and international flights around the world. But they wanted to attract new customers to their business. The way they did that was they lowered their quality. They brought in a new product. The new product is Jetstar. That has attracted a lot of new consumers who wanted to pay lower prices for their airfares. Thirdly, we can vary the augmented features. This is very common in the car industry. I can go into a, a, a showroom and buy a model of Subaru Outback. The salesperson will show me their basic model. If I'm prepared to pay more for my Subaru Outback, the salesperson at Subaru will then mention to me things like GPS, spoilers, leather seats, the car stereo system. We call these augmented features. It's a way of attracting new consumers to the same product. Now, let's have a look at services. When a business wants to differentiate their service, there are different strategies. The first one is they may vary the amount of time spent on a service. 
Now, as mentioned previously, some people are prepared to pay $20 for their haircut service, and others are prepared to pay $160 for their haircut. So I can vary the time spent on my service. If people are prepared to pay $160, then I might offer them tea, coffee, wine, I might massage their hair, and I may look through magazines and, and consult them in their haircut. Secondly, I may vary the level of expertise brought to a service. Doctors are a very good example of this. Some doctors will specialise in a particular area to attract a different audience. For example, I might be specialised in heart or kidney transplants, or I might specialise in children. Therefore, I'm going to attract a specific group of consumers. The next one is I may vary the qualifications and experience of the service provider. Now the example I've got here is the law profession. The law profession is split into qualifications. I can go and, and seek the advice from a solicitor. That's the lowest level of lawyer. If I need more experience and qualifications, I will go and see a barrister. A barrister can take my case to court. If I need more qualifications, I'll go and see a Queen's Council, which is the QC. They can take my case right to the High Court. So I've varied my level of qualifications there. It's definitely an important factor for consumers when they're choosing their service provider. I can also vary the quality of the materials and technology used in my service delivery. For example, I might go to a marketing agency and I might ask them to provide me a service of advertising. Now, if that marketing agency has the latest technology in producing brochures and TV commercials, and they're able to produce very high quality, then I'm going to choose them over a competitor. Technology is such a crucial factor in consumers' choice of a business. Computer-aided manufacturing is the example shown here. Computer-aided manufacturing is computers that design a product and then can transform, translate that information to a machine that can produce the, the product. Computer-aided manufacturing means that humans aren't actually needed to make the product. Machines actually take their place. They cut costs for businesses. Medical technologies are obviously very, very important in terms of the x-raying and the cures for cancer, etc. So consumers are always very aware of who has the latest technology to produce their product. Now cross-branding, you will have noticed that supermarkets and petrol stations are joining forces. We call this cross-branding. They may choose to offer consumers added benefits from a cross-branding arrangement. So Woolworths here has cross-branded with Caltex. When I go to the supermarket and I buy my groceries, when I receive my receipt, I will notice that that receipt will enable me to get a discount off fuel at Caltex. Consumers love this relationship. It means that they are saving costs at home and the business loves it because it gives them a competitive advantage. Well, that ends the lesson on strategic planning. See you next time.